Good morning, Mr. Chapman. Good morning, Your Honor. You can proceed whenever you're ready. Thank you. Before the court is Terrence McClinton of cases 2-2, case 1-7, case 1-4, and case 1-4-6. In each of these matters, Mr. McClinton is here today after failing to appear before this court on August 23rd of 2023. In the first case, bond is currently set at $903. This is the second bench warrant. In the second case, bond is currently $1,908. This is the second bench warrant. In the third case, bond is currently $767. This is the fifth bench warrant. And in the fourth case, bond is currently $500, and this is the fourth bench warrant. He reports that he is employed by specialized staffing. Last payment made on these accounts was on April 29th of 2024. And that was through income of holding, which has been in effect since February of 2024. Front of the court recommends that minimal bonds be set on these matters and they be scheduled for hearing on May 15th, 2024 at 8 o'clock a.m. before this court. Mr. McClinton, uh, you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to pay child support or, and appear at a prior hearing. Uh, in this matter, are you the purpose of this hearing is to set a bond that would assure your tenants at the next hearing on May 15, 2024 at 8 o'clock a.m. Are you able to post a bond, sir? No, sir. No, I don't have any money right now. Okay. Living from ends to ends to meet. That's why I'm trying to get this other job Monday for another interview. But you're you're working now, sir, correct? Correct, yes, sir. Okay. But the well, job I work. I okay, what to... I'm gonna do is you do have in the one case you have five uh, bench warrants, and so the court's concerned about that, but you have been paid through income withholding. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set your bond in each case in the amount of zero, so you don't have to post a bond. That means you'll be able to get out today. Presumably you'll be able to then go to work, sir. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Well, I'm doing that because obviously we want you to work, and I'm sure you don't want to be sitting in jail until next week. Uh, no, sir. But as long as you're continuing to pay through income withholding, that should keep you out of jail. But you are going to need to appear by phone. You can do that next week uh, and talk to your uh, enforcement officer and see if you can't come to some resolution, okay? Okay, that's not an issue. Thank you. Okay. It's going to take about an hour. It takes about an hour for those orders to get done. So you won't be able to get out right away, but you'll be able to get out about an hour. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Yes, you sir. have a good day, uh, sir. Thank you, too. Mr. Kilgore, thank you, Mr. Chapman. Today, after failing to appear before this court on February 7th, 2024, for the record, that was a bench warrant hearing. Uh, Mr. Kilborn was previously before the court for a bond review hearing on January 31st of 2024. He was given a $1,000 bond, which he posted and then failed to appear for the hearing. Bond is currently set at $2,530. This is the seventh bench warrant. He reports that he is self-employed, and the last payment made on this account was the $1,000 bond forfeiture. Front of the court recommends that a reasonable bond be set on this matter and it be scheduled for hearing on May 15th, 2024 at 8 o'clock a.m. before this court. Mr. Kilborn, now you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to appear at a prior hearing as a result of your failure to pay child support. Purpose of this hearing is to set a bond that would assure your tenants at the next hearing on May 15th, 2024 at 8 o'clock a.m. Are you able to post a bond, sir? I don't have any money. I didn't hear you. Sorry. I don't have any money, though. No. Okay. Well, court notes that uh, you did have a prior bond review hearing, and then approximately a week later, you didn't show for your hearing. So the court's considering that. And uh, what I'm going to do 
in this matter is I could leave the bond at the uh, $2,530. I'm not. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set your bond in the amount of $1,000. If you're able to post that, you'd be able to be released. Do you have any questions? No. Okay. Thank you. You're free to go. Have a good day. In each of these matters, Mr. Curtis, excuse me, Mr. Lewis is here today after failing to appear before a prior on April 21st, 2014. In the first case, bond is currently set at $1,981. In the second case, bond is currently $2,992. This is the first bench warrant in each case. He reports no employment. Last payment made on these accounts was in December of 2022. Front of the court recommends that reasonable bonds be set on these matters and they be scheduled for hearing on May 15th, 2024 at 8.45 a.m. before this court. Mr. Lewis, uh, you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to appear at a prior hearing as a result yes, of your failure to pay child support. Purpose of this hearing is to set a bond that would assure your tenants at the next hearing on May 15, 2024 at 845 AM. You will get yes. notice that in writing. Are you able to post a bond, sir? Uh, how much would, would that completely be? I just, may I say something if possible? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I just started a new job and unfortunately I'm in here right now. I just, my, my fiance and I just signed a two year lease for our house. So I'll do anything I have to, to get back out and get my job and get all this taken care of. So well, whenever we, we, you start paying child support, that's what you have to do. And you yeah, obviously absolutely. haven't done that. Now it's been over, uh, over uh, two years. Yes. I obviously I have no choice now, but my, if I may say so, my kids are week on and week off with me. So I do take care of them. And if we can, if I need to have uh, my child's mom come to court and verify that, that is not a problem. So, well, so what I'm you can do is if, if again, if you're on good terms and someone, let's say the uh, payee is willing to waive the support arrearage, you can always do yes, that. Or very likely because we are on very good terms. Because okay, uh, well, that's what you're going to have to do. I'm going to okay. reduce your bond in hopes that you could be released. I'm going to set your bond in both cases in the amount of three hundred dollars. If you're able to post that, you'd be able to be released. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, sir. I appreciate you. Okay. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you. Plaintiff is not here. Good morning, Mr. Mix. Uh, in light of what uh, Ms. Rathman hasn't appeared, have you had any communication with her? She's messaged me a few times, but I've asked her to see our son on numerous occasions, and she hasn't. She'll either ignore me or she tell me that she don't want me to see him until there's a court order and she's missed court twice now. So, Okay. Uh, well, what the court's going to do, because she hasn't appeared in this matter, and uh, this is a required hearing, the court's going to send her a notice of intent to dismiss, and uh, she's going to have to take action or the case court will dismiss the case. Uh, if you, in fact, are not having uh, any luck with getting parenting time, you always have a right to file a motion or again if we dismiss this case you can file your own case seeking to get parenting time so you can you can yeah, pursue um, that you can pursue that independently of what she does uh, yeah i've already filed for that oh okay in, in this case have you filed for that yeah uh, yes okay um we i was just trying to figure out if i was able to get any emergency parenting time because I haven't been able to see him in over a month now. And well, she you, will. You, you can. What you have to do is you have to file a motion and set it for a hearing. Okay. If you yeah. file the motion and you set it for a hearing, then the court will decide it at that time. But when you just file, whether you file the motion or complaint, I don't know what you file. But if you, if you file and you don't schedule it for a hearing, then the matter doesn't come between before the court then. This that's what this is. Okay, is here's what what, is? what you file is you file an answer to the complaint. Yes. Yeah. But you didn't file you didn't file a motion for parenting time. So just on your answer, it's good, it's great that you filed an answer, but mm. you have to file you have to file the motion as well to get it before the court. So that's the only way the court, you know, can can respond to it is if again if you file the motion 
and you notice it up for a Monday, you can notice it any Monday, that any date that you can give her nine days notice, and um, you can schedule it at 10 or 10.30 on a Monday. The clerk told me that I wasn't able to when I went in to do that. You weren't able to file a motion? Yeah, correct. Yeah. For court parenting time. Well, the, the, the clerk was wrong, whoever you talked to, or maybe they didn't understand what you were saying. But because there is an ongoing case, you have a right to, again, proceed for parenting time. So get your uh, get your motion, get a notice of hearing, and schedule it, like I say, any Monday with at least nine days notice and schedule it for 10 or 1030 and file it with the clerk. And then uh, at that point, uh, if there's any problem, they can call up to our office and explain why why they're not taking it. Okay. Okay? Yep. Okay. We, you will get the uh, notice of intent to dismiss because all we have before us is her complaint and she hasn't appeared. Mm -hmm. So it'll, it'll get dismissed unless you file your, your motion, et cetera. All right. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. You have a good day. Thank you, Your Honor. Yes. This is the case of... Hold on. Let me, let me just say... Mr. Goodwill, in this matter, you're before the court charged with a civil contempt of court due to your failure to pay child support and or related expenses. Upon a first conviction, you could be ordered to serve up to 45 days in jail. If it's a second or subsequent offense, up to 90 days in jail. You understand the charges? Yes, sir. Court will advise you have a right to an attorney. The court would appoint an attorney to represent you should you desire an attorney. It's my understanding that you wish to proceed without an attorney. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Are you doing so freely and voluntarily? Uh, yes. Has anyone threatened you, coerced you, used any undue influence, pressure, or promises to get you to appear without an attorney? No, sir. Carl will find that Mr. Goodwill does freely and voluntarily waive his right to an attorney. Uh, Mr. Goodwill, I'll have you and Ms. Uh, Petrullio raise your right hand. We'll have you sworn in, then we'll proceed. Uh, Mr. Goodwill is before the court by way of a bench warrant hearing after failing to appear for an adjourned hearing on May 18th, 2022. He does have a current support obligation of $69 a month. The arrearages in this case that are $4,954.59 are to be paid at the rate of $34.50 plus um, that's guideline, the guideline amount plus fees for a total monthly obligation of $107.00. The last payment that we received on this case was unemployment on September 24th, 2021 in the amount of $69. He's had four prior show causes. This is his sixth bench warrant. There have been three findings of contempt. In just the last year, he should have paid $1,284. He's paid nothing. And I indicated the balance is that $4,954.59. Um, he reports he's not working. Um, I, this has just been the history, pretty much, of this case. Okay. Mr. Goodwill, do you uh, dispute or contest any of the statements made by Ms. Petrullio? That's the truth, sir. Okay. Uh, tell me, she says you're not working. Why are you not working? I have uh, uh, I filed for disability. Um, I'm going to have to file again when I get out. Okay. And I'll just I have you have speak up. It's a little bit faint, sir, so I'm having trouble hearing you. Uh, I agree so, you filed so, you filed for disability. Yes. I'm uh, obviously, as you said, you're going to refile, so you were turned down. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, what in the last year, what have you done to acquire employment? I have been self-employed, trying to do odd jobs and stuff like that. Um I'm trying to figure out if I still have a place to stay and stuff like that. Um, since I've been incarcerated, um, I miss I miss my doctor's appointment. Um, okay. I'm, you say that you've uh, been working odd jobs. Let's say in the last year, on average, how much do you make per month doing your odd jobs? Um, with with my health and and full cost and and living arrangements. Okay, I didn't ask you about that. I asked how much do you make per month uh, on average in the last year? I'll give it a roughly estimate of uh, probably, probably uh, two, two, 
200, 300, something like that. Two to two to three hundred dollars. Is that what you said? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, you've got a minimal support obligation of sixty nine dollars, and total with the arrearage is one hundred and seven. So, obviously, you would be able to put something and pay something towards the uh, support obligation. You haven't paid since back in uh, two thousand twenty one. So. You're now three and over three and a half years. Yes, sir. two and a half years since the last payment. I need, I need, uh, a, like, uh, uh, I ran out of them um, slip things that they usually used to give us and stuff uh, for the uh, child support. Because, like, when I pay my child support, I will go and get a money order and just will just fill out FOC and and just put in a mail. And I thought it would just go, you know, directly here to. To, to this jail and stuff, but it's not going directly here. It's going to my other uh, child support that I have. Like I said, I need I need more slips so I can know exactly where these slips, I mean, where the money can exactly go to. Okay. That, that's all I needed. And I haven't had no slips. Plus also, I've been having a currently break-in with my mail and stuff, so I haven't had mailed in, in in almost about about almost about like a year or so you haven't had mail in a year yes my mail so what, been, so what they do is somebody is breaking in and stealing yes. your mail every day somebody has been down at my mailbox waiting on my mail and other people has been seeing that and so to the point where i have not been getting my mail so i don't know where my mail is but i just started before I got incarcerated, I just got just started getting my mail back to come and tell me where it's where it belongs to be. So I'm gonna have to find somewhere else to to uh, let my mail go somewhere else. Okay. What what's your education background, sir? I'm in the twelfth grade. Okay. And. Uh... When was the last full-time employment that you had? Last full-time employment, I was, um, I'm trying to be a caretaker for my mother right now. Okay, I'm not asking what you're trying to do. I asked when was the last time you had full-time employment? Last time I had full-time employment, uh, I, uh, Probably 2022. Okay. If I'm not too mistaken. Why why are you why do you feel that you're not employable? I have a disability. I have a learning disability, plus um I'm a diabetic. It's hard for me to get my medicine and stuff. I I'm in here right now and I still haven't had my medicine since I've been incarcerated. Well, you understand people probably thousands and thousands of people work that are diabetic. They take their medication and they work. Yes. I have a minor, I had a minor stroke in 2021 and stuff like that. Um, okay. Oh. Anything else that you'd like me to be aware of? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I really have no problem trying to pay this. If, like I said, if I have a, a, them, them little slips that I can really, and, and it lets me know directly where I can send the money to. I have no money. I have I have no problem coming up with the money. It's just sending it to the proper place to where, where it's supposed to go. Okay. But that's all I need is the slips. If I had the slips, I, 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 I promise you, that will get to our money. And stuff. Okay, well... What happens, sir, when you send in the money, you can always just simply reference your case number and do it that way. You don't have to. There's no, obviously, it's easier if you have some payment slips, but you don't have to. They'll take the money if, in fact, you just reference the case and do it that way. Right. And I don't have, like I said, I haven't had no piece of mail or nothing from, from, from y'all in a minute, so... I don't know the case number and stuff like that. So well, you have, can always you can always contact the circuit court clerk's office. Tell them your name; they will give you the case number. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. 
I really didn't. Yeah. So. It, it's it's not secret. They're not going to base you know maintain the confidentiality of those numbers. So you can easily get those. And how okay. much is my, my how much is my payment? Excuse me. I, I'm sorry. How much is my payment? You said that. Yeah, you can you can make you can make the payments through the front of the court's office. Correct. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. Uh, Miss Petroya, I think he asked how much his payment was. It's one hundred and seven a month. Oh, okay. One hundred and seven dollars per month. Okay. Miss Petroya, what uh, what does he have credit for? You know, Your Honor, I forgot to look at that um, before I came in, I'm not, but I can get the date that he booked in and I'll put that in the order. Okay. For the days. Anything else, Mr. Goodwill? So I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just trying to get out so I can go ahead and just, I took Miss Petroleum's, Miss, um, Miss, I took some advice from her and stuff. I was, I was thinking about giving up, but now I'm not going to give up. I'm going to take your advice like you asked me to, Ms. Petroleum, and, and succeed with the, the agreement and stuff like that. Um, it's not, it's not, it's not my fault. It, it is my fault, but it's not my fault trying to reach out and, and be more closer to my child and stuff. Like I said, I need to know about, I need to know, get more information about the, uh, trying to reach out more so I can get my visitation rights and all that type of stuff. Okay. To, to see well, that's, that's irrespective of today's. We're only talking about collecting support. You have a yes. right to, you have a right to enforce any order for parenting time and you can do that uh, through the clerk's office. Yes. Well, in this matter, the court will make the following finding that uh, Mr. Goodwill is uh, again, not paid in over two and a half years in this uh, particular case. He has a nominal, a support obligation, which comes out to $107 with a payment towards the arrearage that uh, he claims that he is uh, attempting to get disability. However, he was denied previously as he had a learning disability, as he claims, that he has been working out jobs making between two and $300 per month. Uh, he hasn't made any payments uh, during that time. Uh, he claims that he has some physical disabilities. He can't claims he's diabetic. Uh, he claims that uh, back in uh, 2021, he had a minor stroke. Uh, but then he claims that he has no problem making payments in this matter, but he, again, doesn't know where to send them. He doesn't have his case number. He doesn't have his payment slip, notwithstanding the fact that the court, if he went to the front of the court, they would give him all that information. And further, he would they would take his payments if he did that. So the court's not convinced that he's made any uh, uh I don't have attempts, uh, reasonable attempts at payment in this matter. The court will find that he's failed or refused to comply, and therefore he is in contempt of court. Anything, sir, before sentencing? So um, I really, I really, I really do want to pay my child support. Um, I'm not trying to run no game or no scheme or nobody or nothing. I don't have no type of transportation to get back and forth to Battle Creek. And stuff. I live in Kalamazoo. Um, well, that's good because Kalamazoo has more employment opportunities than Battle Creek. So that's good that you live there. So I, I really, I really, I, I, like I said, if I had this this chance, I mean, I really will do it this time. Okay. Um, well, you'll have your chance when you get out. Uh, the court in this matter uh, does note that uh, Mr. Goodwill has had three fire findings of contempt. The court is going to sentence him to 90 days in jail with credit for whatever the time is that he has when Ms. Petrullio is able to look that up. The court would allow him to purge himself of contempt by paying the sum of $1,000. So that will be the order of the court. You're free to go, sir. Have a good day. Okay. Thank Mr. you, Mr. Parker, in this matter, you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to pay child support and or related expenses. Upon a first conviction, you could be ordered to serve up to 45 days in jail on a second or subsequent offense up to 90 days in jail. Do you understand the charges? Yes, sir, I do. Court will advise you have a right to an attorney. The court would appoint an attorney to represent you should you desire an attorney. My understanding that you wish to proceed without an attorney. Is that correct? That's correct. Are you doing so freely and voluntarily? Yes, sir. Has anyone threatened you, coerced you, used any undue influence, pressure, or promises to get you to appear without an attorney? No, sir. 
Court will find that Mr. Parker does freely and voluntarily waive his right to an attorney. Mr. Parker, I'm going to have you and Ms. Gilman raise your right hand. We'll have you sworn Mr. in. Mr. Parker we'll and Heather Meanstone. Mr. Parker's total monthly obligation is $81.25, $56 for current support, and $21.75 towards arrears, and then the $3.50 per month service and processing fees. His last volunteer payment is $17 on October 31st, 2019. This is his 13th show cause. He has had seven bench warrants and four contempt findings. Friend of the court has monitored his compliance over the last six months at a rate of $81.25 per month. He should have paid $487.50, and he has paid nothing. The shortfall is the $487.50. His total arrears are $14,245.14 through May of 2024. He's currently receiving state assistance through Medicaid. He does have the ability to work and pay his obligation. He has stated he currently babysits to support himself. He was previously ordered by Your Honor to 45 days in the Calhoun Correctional Facility on January 1st of 2019. Friend of the court would like Your Honor to know that Mr. Payne has a poor history of making payments meeting his obligation. His Parker. actions have shown Parker. he is not compliant and failed to make good faith effort to comply with the court order. He was booked into Calhoun County Jail on April 25th, 2024 and has credits for 13 days served. Okay. Mr. Parker, uh, do you uh, dispute or contest any of the statements made by Ms. Gilman? No, I do not. Okay. Do you have any questions for Ms. Gilman? Uh, no, I do not at this time. Okay. What would you like to tell me, sir? Um, I just had a, uh, a second interview for uh, SWT Excavating out of Galesburg, Michigan, uh, making $57 an hour. That was on Tuesday, the Tuesday before I got arrested which I was unfortunately unable to make. Um, I have been trying to gain employment uh, with no luck. I do have a lot of felony convictions. I don't know if that hinders my opportunity, you know, at some places. Um, as she said, I was babysitting my godson to make money to help pay bills and stuff like that. Um, but that has also changed. He is in school now. So that, that hasn't happened in a, quite, quite a while. So, but, um, and that's about that's about all I have to say right now. I, I just I need to get back on track, and I understand that. Okay. Well, tell me in this matter, uh, how have you supported yourself over the last year? Uh, well, last summer I was working for a landscaping company, getting paid cash. Um, that was a brief stint. It was probably two months. Um, I did get arrested last May for child support and bonded out for five hundred dollars. That was money that I had used to save up. That was uh, taken, that I believe, by you yourself, sir and put towards, I, I'm not sure what that was, it was put to, but I had Mr. Uh, Sackrider as my lawyer during that time. Um, then I moved from uh, my current residence uh, in December, um, and I moved into my new house in January, and I'm not sure that I I got a court date or not. I must have, but I, I must not have received it, or I'm, I'm not aware of, of of that. So I don't know if this is for failure just to pay or failure to show. You know, I'm not sure what that is. Okay. <clears throat> What's your education background, sir? Uh, I got my GED in prison. Okay. And uh, in the last year, what have you done to acquire employment? Well, like I said, I, I've, I've actually been out there looking for jobs. Like I said, I had one interview at SWT Excavating out of Galesburg, Michigan. I had a second interview lined up for that position. I've been a, a machine operator in the past from 2015 to 2018 for a job that was uh, called RJ Industrial. They folded during COVID. Their main office is out of Flint and I didn't have the means to, to transportation back and forth there. So <clears throat> that, that kind of went by the wayside, but. Um, so you say you have you have a second interview and I've asked in the last year, what have you looking, what have you done looking for employment? And you've told me one thing, anything else? Uh, no, that's pretty much it. Just trying to get what I can get. Like I said, landscaping jobs, uh, anything that I can get going right away. You know, I, I have tried. I tried getting back to the landscaping company, BCLS, this summer. Uh, they told me that they would look at me, so I was hoping to get back with them this summer and, and start working with them. Okay. Well, you uh, you worked in landscaping for, as you said, about two months last year. So I take it, because obviously that's physically demanding work, that you don't have yes, any sir. physical disabilities that keep you from working. I have I have 17 pins and a, 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 low, a plate in my lower right leg. It, I am kind of hindered at some things, but but not for the most part. I, I'm pretty able to do most most work. Okay. How, let's say, 
how do you propose changing things or what plan do you have to pay your support obligation? Well, I would like I would like help from I've never been offered help from Michigan Works. It does it does hinder my ability to get a job with my felony convictions. I, that really is a thing. I would like to get help from Michigan Work. I, I don't I've never really been able or been told to go down there and get help. I know that that's a thing, but I've always tried to do it on my own. Obviously, that hasn't worked. Okay. Anything else, sir? Um, no, sir, not this morning. No. Okay. Well, in this case, uh, Mr. Parker does have a nominal support obligation of uh, $81.25. That his last payment in this matter was more than four and a half years ago. Uh, so, uh, again, he hasn't uh, made any uh, substantial attempts at payment if in that uh, particular time. That uh, he did state that he was doing some babysitting, had some income that he did last summer. He was working at a landscaping business for approximately two months. During that time, he did not pay anything towards his support obligation. Uh, he said he's looking for employment, but he only had minimal or nominal uh, amount of stuff that he was doing. He said he had some had an interview, had a second interview, and he didn't uh, delineate anything else that he had done to acquire employment. The court will find that he has failed to exercise a good faith attempt at compliance. He's failed to refuse to comply. And as a result, he is in contempt of court. Anything before sentencing, sir? Oh, no, sir, not this time. Okay. Court does note that he's had four prior findings of contempt in this matter. The court is going to sentence him to 90 days in jail with credit for uh, 13 days. The court would allow him to purge himself of contempt by paying the sum of $1,000. And uh, the court would further order that what he is at, out of jail and not incarcerated that he would participate in the GEMS program. That will be the order of the court, sir. You're free to go. Have a good day. Involving Thomas Payne and Amy Godby here. Mr. Payne's total monthly obligation is $28.50, $25 for arrears, and $3.50 per month for service and processing fees. His last voluntary payment was $67 on August 13th, 2021. This is his 11th show cause. He has had nine bench warrants and six contempt findings. Friend of the court has monitored his compliance for the last six months at the rate of $28.50 per month. He should have paid 70, I'm sorry, $171 and he has paid nothing. The total shortfall is the $171. His total arrears are $51,100.74 through May of 2024. He is currently receiving state assistance through Medicaid. He does have the ability to work and pay his obligation. Friend of the court would like your honor to know that Mr. Payne has a very poor history of making payments and meeting his obligation actions have shown that he is not compliant and has failed to make good faith effort to comply with the order of the court. He was booked in a Calhoun County jail on April 24th, 2024, and has credit for 14 days served. Okay. Mr. Payne, do you dispute or contest any of the statements made by Ms. Gilman? Um, no, I don't. Only do you have any, I, do you have any questions that, for Ms. Joe, Gilman? Sorry. Can I? Do you have any questions oh. for Ms. Gilman? No, that, I, okay. I turned myself in up here at the jail, though. I wasn't okay. picked up by an officer or nothing like that. So, what would you what would you like to tell me, sir? Um, that I turned myself in because I knew I couldn't go any farther with these warrants. I know I, I got a job offer, and they told me that since I'll be driving company vehicles, that I couldn't go any farther. So I turned myself in here, and I got one over in Branch County too. And I know I'll be sent over there. Okay. Well, I see that you haven't paid anything since back in uh, August of 2021. Why? Uh, well, during the pandemic, it was kind of hard for me to get work and stuff. And then right after that, I I should have sent the paperwork in, and but I fell down my stairs and I broke my scapula and broke my chest plate and stuff. And I, I do have the paper. I went to Henry Ford, but my insurance got cut off at that point in time, so I couldn't go and have a follow-up with my Dr. Colburn. So it took a while for it to heal up, but it's healed up now, and I'm and I'm willing I'm to go back to work. I know I haven't made any good efforts to make my support, and I have no good reason for it, and I'm okay. sorry about that. Let's say, wh when did you have the uh, the fractures that you're talking about? Last uh, year, February. February, it was the last snowstorm we had right in February. February of 23? Yeah, yeah. So it's now been... Now, maybe it's like been, 15 months. Yes, yes. Okay. 
And I have, and I, I went to Henry Ford, so I got the paperwork and stuff. I just don't have it. I just should have sent it to you guys. I thought it would heal. They said it would heal up pretty quick, and it really didn't. <laughs> okay. Well, let, let's say in that time or sometime, obviously, at some point you healed up. When do you believe that you were healed, that you could have worked? Uh, I've been trying to get back at it for about the last four or five months. I've been trying to get back at it. You know? What have you done in the last four or five months to acquire employment? Um, I've gotten a hold of uh, a couple companies and stuff, and uh, Gruss. It's a uh, Gruss personnel. They uh, that's a tradesman group, and that's why that's why I've worked for it in the past. And they got some job offers right now, you know. But I've got to get this stuff cleared up, and it's not seasonal work, but the work is more in the summer, you know. And if you get with the right company, they'll hire you on and keep you on, you know. But that's why I'm that's why I'm doing this now. Okay. I have no good excuse. I'll be honest with you. (laughs) How have you supported yourself if you've had no income, sir? I was helping. I got a bad situation. I was with a a woman. She had four kids. She was helping me out. I was helping her out. But yeah, the situation wasn't going to be. I, I needed to get out and get a job and stuff. And it wasn't being that way. I was honestly helping her more than anything. Oh. And yeah, and I was I was an idiot. I can't anything afford it. Anything else you'd like to tell me? <sighs> Just that I'm trying to do my best, sir. What What's your education background, sir? I got I graduated. Okay. I'm a tradesman. I'm a journeyman plumber. It's your what? I'm a journeyman plumber. Okay. Well, there's a substantial demand in the trade, so you should be employable. Yes. And with warrants, it makes it hard because a lot of times they want you to drive company vehicles. Yeah. So you get pulled over, you get the vehicle impounded, and you never have a job again. We're working that. <laughs> Well, what, what the court's going to do in this uh, particular matter, the court is uh, does note that uh, you have a nominal support obligation of uh, $28.50 per yes. month, that notwithstanding that, you have acquired a, a, a rearage of over $51,000. You've had six prior uh, contempt findings. And in this matter, uh, as you stated, you've had you had some injury uh, early 2023, but for at least the last four or five months, you've had opportunity to acquire employment. You have not done so. And uh, as you stated, you have no excuses. You you have obviously education well, and training as a human plumber. Uh, you could be, you could be working in that particular field. And, mm-hmm. uh, but, but you have not done so. The court will find that you have, not made a good faith attempt at compliance, you fail to refuse to comply, and you are in contempt of court. Anything before sentencing, sir? Uh, just, I'm gonna try to do better. I really okay. am. Well, hopefully, hopefully you do, and we hope you do. What the court's gonna do is the court, based upon your uh, history in this matter, the court is gonna sentence you to 90 days in jail with credit for 14 days served. The court was set a purge amount of $1,000, in this matter. And uh, do you have any questions, sir? Not at all, sir. Okay. Thank you. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Your Anything Honor. Else, Ms. Gilman? Nope. That is it for today. Okay. Thank you. You have a good, good day. afternoon to everyone. Hi, Judge. Good afternoon. Good I want to first state uh, that uh, so that the clients are aware that your both of your attorneys did an excellent job and you were well represented. In this matter, as most cases, credibility is always a consideration. Oftentimes, a party will allege that the other party or one of their witnesses is not truthful or lying. The court has found, however, that inconsistencies in testimony does not mean that an individual has lied. Conflicting testimony can occur as a result of a witness's background, perception, bias, understanding, misunderstanding, or mistake. And sometimes with with the parties themselves, they have a tendency to be somewhat self-serving and uh, again, will minimize often some of the other uh, factors in the the particular case. 
When inconsistencies occur, the court will attempt to determine if they can be reconciled by other testimony or evidence. There was some conflicting testimony in this case, but uh, not more than the court would normally expect to see. The court will assess the credibility of the witnesses and the evidence as we uh, proceed in the uh, case. First, I want to address the breakdown of the marriage. It is clear from the testimony of both parties that there has been a breakdown of the marital relationship. Both testified why and how this happened. The defendant testified that plaintiff is controlling, but court would note she controlled the household, the party's finances, and many of the issues concerning the children. Defendant testified that the plaintiff removed funds from the joint account and did not talk to her about it before he did it. So it sounds to this court at least that uh, like someone who has upset because she couldn't control this particular event. Both parties focused on their own needs and wants and did not recognize the other party's wants and needs. Excuse me, did you open up? We're not on, are we? Oh, on YouTube? Yeah. Oh, I'm, my apologies.